So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming in. And so this afternoon, I will be talking a bit about something I've been working for quite a while now, and which is some kind of packaging solution for Python software, which I've called Bento. So, uh, so for the Chinese reading people, like they can read the kanji, but uh, so yeah, Bento is this famous small lunchbox uh, used for like food. And can anyone, everyone hear me? Or should I use the microphone? No, okay. Everyone hears me. Great. And uh, so yeah, Bento had this nice lunchbox, and like sometimes you know, a like Japanese mother would spend a lot of time to prepare this for their kids. They would do something cute like this. I didn't find a python, so like I found something green, which like remotely looks like a python. And um, so the idea is like Bento helps you like to package nicely your Python software. So this is where the real name is coming from. So yeah, actually I can skip this because I was already introduced before by Ivan. So well, I guess the main thing is packaging is pretty boring. Uh, it's like it's like like video games, you know, like it's exciting and everything. But packaging is like uh, man, that's boring. And like so, me to explain why I kind of find it interesting is so I've been really involved with NumPy, SumPy since like 2006, 2007. And uh, I've been in particular really involved with all the problem around like building and installing NumPy, SciPy. Because one of the problems is NumPy, contrary to a lot of Python software, is basically using a lot of C extension and even, God forbid, Fortran extensions. And um, it's kind of hard to install for people. And we support a lot of esoteric platforms. Like for most people, like esoteric is Windows. And for us, esoteric is like Cray, which doesn't even support like shared library. All oh, these kind of like really weird things that have weird compilers and, and so like it's kind of challenging for us to use what's available in Python and um, and I really wanted to improve the situation and again the elevator speech from Bento is you have someone who doesn't really know Python but he saw he sees this like kind of cool script for like some machine learning trick and I would like him to be able to use Python you know like just the time it takes him to download the software, but like he doesn't have to fiddle too much with the stuff, and just take him a few minutes to set up this software, and that's really what I want. Like, I don't want people to have to spend half a day to install things. I want to be people to be able like to forget about all that crap, and to be able to actually use the software and do cool stuff with it. So like the reason why I'm interested in deployment and build and all these kind of things is so that other people don't have to care about it in a way. So, I guess. Now, what is packaging, I guess, kind of obvious for everyone, but still, it's whatever happens bef between the sources and the user. And the thing is, the user can be different things. Like, if you're a developer, then Git repository, that's great, and your packaging is Git, basically, or, you know, getting from GitHub, which is pretty popular now, and that's enough. And, like, if you're a web developer, then, you know, like having tables is good enough. Like, people just do pip install, you install from a source, Tables that is getting downloaded from the internet. That's good enough. That's great, and that works well for many people. But the problem is again for something like NumPy and SciPy. If you do pip install NumPy or pip install SciPy, oh by the way you need a Fortran compiler. Oh by the way you need all these weird Fortran libraries that all work differently on every single platform. So like source is completely impractical. Like when you want to distribute NumPy, SciPy, or anything on top of it, it has to be a binary installer. And Something else that I'm kind of interested in is like better integration with like Linux distribution or Windows or Mac, like how to allow to easily give Mac OS X package, MSI, Windows installer, Debian, RPM, whatever. Like how to make this like easier. So the thing that is used by pretty much anyone here, I think in the room is these utils, which is something that has been existed for like 12 years and you don't want to know what existed before. And the idea is these utils make it very easy to package like simple packages. And like it works pretty well for this case. And you know, you just create a setup.py, you call your setup function with a few attributes. And you know, if you just have a couple of files and a few pack, like Python modules and sub packages, this works quite well. You can build a table, you can build a build Windows installer, all these kind of things works great. But this was not enough for everybody. And one of the things that happens was quite significant was in the mid 2000, like Philip G. Bai and some of the people started like set of tools, and then you had distribute, which are like some kind of extension on top of distributors. So I had quite a few things, but I think the really one killer feature 
of setup tools was to add like package dependency, which allows for pip and easy install to work. That is, if you inst easy install like full bar, and full bar says, oh, I depend on these other packages, then pip and easy install are smart enough to read this metadata and to know, okay, we have to fetch these other packages and we install them first. And this thing, I think, was a killer feature why many, many people use setup tools on top of these two things. So that's the nice side of the story. And then there's a the bad side of the story, which is, this is kind of, it's good like for the end user because it works relatively well. But when you want to extend these to to like some bit more esoteric kind of things like handling Fortran, then it's pretty horrible. Um, like adding new compiler support is, is hell. Like creating new command, especially if you need some commands that depend on other command, that's hell. So like anything related to comp compilation basically is horrible. Like most Python packages have one or two extensions, one or two C files, so that's great. You can always rebuild from scratch. You know, machines are really fast now. When you're SciPy, you have like 1,000 C and Fortran file. You don't want to rebuild everything all the time. But the problem is this still doesn't really know about dependencies. Like if you just change one C file, this is not smart enough to know, oh, just rebuild this thing and everything that depends on it. So the only way to build reliably is to basically rebuild everything from scratch, which when you have 1,000 files, C files is not that great. And another issue is that this use was not really conceived to be extensible. So basically, the way you extend this is by monkey patching. So setup tools like kind of monkey patch things on top of this tools. But then in NumPy, you have our own extension. So you have like this tools, you have setup tools. Oh, and by the way, we monkey patch as well. So what happens when setup tools and NumPy this tools monkey patch the same function? Basically, in NumPy this tools, we need to like monkey patch like conditionally, like, oh, if setup tools is in, is in sys models, you need to do something, and if it's not, we need to do something else. But and as you can imagine, this this is horrible to support, and this is really fragile and doesn't work very well. And uh, to give an idea a bit of like the s scope of the issue is, this utility itself is around 10,000 lines of code, 10,000 lines of code, and NumPy distribute extension is as big, so but non trivial extension, and you have like numerous. Ex issues when setup tools start to appear, like a lot of people say, oh, easy install NumPy doesn't work, and why NumPy is broken, blah, blah, blah. And like, when you try to walk into the internet of these tools, you realize that the code is pretty poor. Like, for example, you have compiler classes, but the compiler classes don't have the same attribute depending on when you're in Windows with Visual Studio, or whether you use like GCC. And, and it's just like kind of poor code quality in general. So one of the first thing I tried for NumPy was there's this thing, cool thing called scones, which is kind of a make-like replacement in Python. And I thought, okay, maybe I can kind of integrate these two T's and scones together. And I called this uh, numscons, very creative word. And I was like, okay, this worked relatively okay, but this was pretty painful to, 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 to do. And I was not that happy with the results because I just realized this two is just not really in a way that you can do this kind of thing. You can do it, but it's not pretty. So that's when I started to work on Bento like two years and a half ago. And like one of the things was learning from my experience on MSCONS. That is, so the first thing you realize with these utilities is these utilities is not really written as a library. You have all kind of global state, and like especially when you monkey patch, you know, it's kind of dirty. It doesn't make testing that easy either. So like one of the key thing I studied from when I studied Bento was I went to write something that is really written as a library from the ground up. Like you don't have high coupling between commands, you have no global state, you can have multiple Bento package in your same process kind of things. And the other idea was to scale down on up. Like this is relatively simple for simple package, but it's pretty hard for hard like hard packages like NumPy. But I didn't want something that works only for NumPy or SciPy. I wanted something that is still at least as easy, if not easier, than these two tools for like, small packages. OK, so let's talk a bit about the meat of Bento now. So like, the, main, the main file in a Bento package is, is to have something called a bento.info file. And it's basically a declarative file. It's, it's, on, it's own syntax, which looks a bit like Python is indented and everything. But it's declarative. Like, it's not Python code. It's not like I'm not like ev evaluating some Python code or anything. And as you can see, I'm, I think the format is pretty straightforward here. 
you just have a bunch of metadata. Here you can put the description, and you can put some like REST string here if you want. And then you describe the library. That the library can be like packages. That's why you declare your C, func C extensions, like modules, etc. And like so, for simple packages, it doesn't go much more complicated than that. You need to add a bit more metadata, but that's basically it. So the thing is, you have only this file. So how does this work? Because for this utils, you have the setup.py file, so you know how to execute it. But for Bento, it's a bit different. You have something called Bento Maker, and you have so Bento Maker is like the idea is to use a bit like to use it a bit like configure, make, make install kind of things uh, from auto tools. So the idea is you have like several commands, and you say Bento Maker configure, like Bento Maker build to build things. So if you have C extension here, you will like actually build the C, the compile the C extension, and then Bento Maker install will actually install things. So the thing is, you don't want to do that all the time. So actually, what happens is if you just do Bento, Mento, Bento Maker sorry install from the start, then it will automatically run configure and build for you. So in this way, it works pretty similar to uh, these details. So one of the things that is actually painful in these details is to add data files. Because um, first, you have like many different ways of doing it. You have like three or four different ways if you can set up tools uh, way of doing it. And you cannot really do it in a flexible way where you can say, OK, install data files here on Windows and here on Linux. Like, so I wanted something a bit simpler. And here, I just copy what happens in auto tools. That is, you just say, OK, I have some data file section. You can have as many as you want. And you say, I want to install it in a, this target directory. So here, like the dollar means it's kind of like a variable. And PDFD will be expanded to the actual pass at runtime. And it will be different on Windows and on Linux to have like some kind of sensible default. And then you say which kind of files you want to install. And the point of this PDFD here is that you can customize it as a configure time. That is, if you're not happy with the default value, you can just say, Mentor Maker configure, PDFD is blah, blah, blah. And then automatically, PDFD here with a dollar will be expanded to the actual value. So because it may be a bit painful to like declare all your files, you have some kind of ant like glob format supported as well. So you could say, here, this format means get just all the PDF files which are in doc directory, including like in the star star here means like recursively, like just including any zip directory of doc. So what another thing you can do is you can declare your own path. Like let's say you want, like you're not happy with the default path you have in uh, Bento. You have some additional ones. And then you just declare, you declare like you have some name and you declare the default, and then some description, which should be used in the, like the help of the configure command. And then once you declare this thing in the bento.info file, this food here will be like usable in all the data files coming afterwards. So you can say, OK, here I want to install things in food here. And automatically, bento is smart enough to say, OK, I have this food here. I can add the option to configure, so you can customize this at will. So one of the problems is obviously, OK, obviously I believe like Bento is better than these two to package, but you have a huge ecosystem of packages on PyPy and using these two tiers, and you have things like virtual and pip, et cetera, and none of that knows about Bento. And like trying to wait for these tools to support Bento, you know, is not going to work very well. So there are a few things that allows um, that kind of interoperability, sorry, with uh, other uh, existing tools. Mm -hmm. So you have like both directions. So you have the first direction is, OK, you already have a package with a setup.py, and you would like to convert it to Bento because I knew like Bento. So you have the convert command in Bento, which allow you like, which does like dirty stuff that basically reads the setup.py and like execute it and do all kind of dirty stuff and convert automatically to bento.info. So what happens here is you have your package, use this utils, you just have to run bento maker convert on it, and then you have a bento info file. So this will work whether your package use this utils, setup tools, uh, or distribute. So I haven't, I mean, I don't think it works, no, I mean, it won't work today with uh, this utils to packaging, but 
there's no reason it can't. It's just adding a bit more code. And um, by this alone, you can already have a nice way to convert from this to this to bento. But still, it doesn't make it work with pip or easy install or anything because they don't know about the bento info format. So what you can do is to actually create a setup.py, a dummy setup.py that emulate these utils, but actually use bento info to populate all the metadata. So basically what you need is only like these four lines, well, I mean four lines of code, to say, okay, so if you package your setup tools, you need to import setup tools first to do all the monkey patching needed. You import bento these utils. I myself don't like, don't like um, import time uh, monkey patching, so you actually have to say, okay, you actually monkey patch uh, things. So once you're at this stage, Bento will monkey patch everything it needs in setup tools, distribution, setup function, etc. And then when you call setup, setup tools, sorry, dot setup, then it will get all this the metadata from Bento info, and we populate everything. And this will allow, for example, pip to work, because pip just look into your package setup.py, and as long as it looks enough like these utils, it will happily install everything. So this, this four lines of code is all you need to actually add support for pip is install uh, to your uh, bento package. So to show a bit of an example here. Um, so let's take a well-known example like Sphinx. This is just a pure table I downloaded from Sphinx. I'm converting and now, like you see, you have all the metadata converting automatically, like version, name, URL, etc. You have like the extra source file taken from the manifest template. Okay, this is boring. You have the different data files, and then you see you have the executables, which will be installed as executables on, on, on Windows. And you have also like the different like install requires, all these kind of things. All this is automatically converted by Vento. And those so things, why it's a relatively simple package, is pretty typical, I think, for most Python packages. And if you work with things, you can, I think, can work with a lot of packages. And it works for distribute as well, for example. And um, so this is one way to, to allow you to like easily convert to Bento, if you prefer Bento, while not losing any of the advantage of using the de facto solution in Python today, which is distributes and distribute and setup tools. So up to now, I've just presented like a few basic things about Bento, which they're like small tricks that makes a bit some things easier, but that's not that interesting. I mean, that's not the kind of things you would like to convert your package to Bento. So one of the things is I have this declarative file, this Bento info file. But the problem is even if like having a declarative file format is nice, it's not always sufficient. Like if you want to like really complicated stuff, you will need to execute some Python code. So to do that, I have the mechanism of hook. So in the bento info file, you just say, OK, use a hook file, which is a pure Python file. So there is no magic in there. It's just Python file. And then you can use this Python file to like do like different things. And the way bento is written, because it's a library, you can actually modify quite extensively the behavior of your build as much as you want. So for example, like one typical example is, let's say you want to add a new command. So here, like very simple command that just when you do bento make a hello, it will print hello. So you just need these four lines of code. You just need to import some stuff from bento. You decorate and you say, oh, this function will be a bento commands. And like each function, each command takes a single argument, which is a context, which is what allow you to like interact with bento. But here we just want to press some, print some message so we don't need to be very complicated. And that's all you need to have a new command in, this to, uh, in Bento, sorry. So at, at that stage, what you can do after is Bento make a hello, and you will print hello. Yeah? It's not clear to me how Bento knows where to find that code. So like in Bento info file, you say there is a, um, 
uh, a field which is called hook file and just says so you can call it anything you want but yeah so one of the things that is annoying with the this to this command is often like commands depend on another command so to be a bit more concrete in numpy we have this um, template source file that is we have some templates that get run through some Python function into some C file. So you need to run this before starting the actual compilation. So we have this build.ssc command, in, uh, which we add in NumPy distributors. And so the problem is you need to tell to build, run build ssc before. But the problem is you, you do that in the build command. And that's problematic because when you import setup tools, setup tools build command doesn't know about build ssc. So you have all these kind of problems because the dependency between commands is set up inside the command. And in Bento, like the dependency between commands is set up dynamically outside the commands, which allows you to like change it if you want. It also allows you, since you have a small constraints engine, you can just say you insert a new command inside existing commands, and you don't need to know about all the other extension to make your own extension work. You just say, there is someone who has command A, you have someone who has command C. I don't need to really know about them. I just want to insert my new command B, and I just need to say command B has to run before C, but after A. And then Bento like, just use some like, topological sort to say, OK, I resolve all my constraints, and if I don't have like, cycles or weird things like that, I know how to run them uh, in the right order. But the key point is this is determined at runtime. So it's not Hard coding into the command or anything. So this is a small example. Like you have a hello command, goodbye command, and you want the goodbye command to come after hello. And like you just say here, so startup is another kind of hook which is run into, which is run every time before any command. So it's run only once, but it's whatever command you're running is run once before any command. And here you just say, okay, I want goodbye to run before hello. So this is one of the ways that I allow for lower coupling between commands compared to these tools. And like, so obviously you can do more than just printing things in commands. So like you have like multiple hooks, like you, can, you have like pre and post hook for each command, like pre-configure, post-configure, pre-build, post-build, etc. And you can like customize things. So like you can say you want to customize compilation flags depending on the platform you're on. You can also like, uh, even customize like the kind of class which are passed to command, and this is what allows uh, Bento to have like integration with third-party tools like Scons or Make or Distutils actually itself or WAF etc. And this allows for, like for very flexible system without having too much tight coupling between all the things that goes together. So I think I have again a small example. Um, So uh, this shows you actually concretely how you just say hook file is my bscript file. And the big here is um, my, um, so it's actually a Python model. And here I just want to say, okay, I want to check that I have the stdo.h header. And you want to run this uh, as a post configure uh, script. Then, then you have the thing you would expect. That is, you know, like it does some things first, but like it's basically checking for the header stdo, and so that's like the way you want to check for like different configuration things for like compilation. You can do it in this post configure hook. So another thing I wanted to improve was uh, that's a recurring point in distributives is how to define version in one single place. Because you always have, OK, like do you define the version in your package? And then in the setup.py, you import your package. But then that means it only works for um, things that are already built, if you have C extension. And like how do you make sure like Sphinx version 
Like if you want to put the version of your package in six docu things documentation, or do you make sure you define the version in only one place so it's shared like everywhere? And this was always a bit annoying for me because I thought that's not such a complicated problem and there should be a simple way to do it. And the way, like one way you can do it in Bento is you have this notion of ben me meta template file. So you just say, okay, this is where to look at. And so here I'm just saying look into this template file. So in is just to say template file. And when Bento will run, it will fill it the template file into like underscore underscore and info.pi. And the idea is your template file looks something like this. So it's again any Python file you want. And when you run Bento maker build, it will automatically fill all the potential metadata you, you, uh, like that are understood by Bento. So for example, like here, when you run Bento maker build, automatically the version will be taken for the Bento info file and will be filled up for version, same for also, and you can use any metadata understood by Bento, which are exactly the one defined in the different pep for the metadata of packaging. And even better is sometimes you want to add like SVN or Git or whatever revision. So what you can do is in hook file, you can actually register additional metadata. So you say, okay, I want to add a Git revision. So just say, okay, here in the pre-build uh, hook, I want to register the metadata Git revision. This compute Git revision is a magic function that will compute uh, the Git uh, revision from the .git uh, subdirectory. And then what you can do is in the template file, you can just say here, you define git revision. And when you do that, then again, when you do bento maker build, it will be automatically populated in this file for you. And then you can use, and so the package knows its own version easily, and the version is only defined at one single place. And this register metadata can be done in build, but it can also be done for like source distribution. So when you produce a table, you will use exactly the same mechanism to populate your version. So you have the Git revision set up for your table and for uh, your installers or for the build version. So as I said at the beginning, uh, the introduction of my talk, like one of the things I really wanted to do was um, to use a, like a real build system like make with dependencies, like when you change a header, you automatically know like that all the C files that include this header are automatically rebuilt. But I knew also because I was a bit of contributor to scones that I definitely didn't want to write my own build engine because it's complicated enough. So like the idea I had was more like how to make Bento flexible enough that you can use different build backends. And uh, at the moment uh, in Bento you have like three different backends. Uh, you have the default ones which use a small dummy build system. You have ones which, one that is WAF, which is uh, like the former scons fork, which is a bit easier to use than scons. And you even have like a distutils backend, which basically use distutils to build C extension. So this allows you to have like backward compatibility if you depend on the way on the distutils way to build C extension. And the key thing is like the code for each backend is relatively small. Like the code backend for like uh, distutils, for example, is like 50 lines of code. And for WAF, it's a bit more involved, but it's not a lot of code. And most of the code of Bento is completely independent of the way you build the extension. So to show a way of how this works concretely, I have a small example of a uh, backend example. So here you have an option, again, in the bento.info file, you have like use backends option. So Yaku is the name uh, I use for my dummy small build engine. So Yaku means baking in Japanese. And um, so if you do that, uh, then you see it will do like different things. But the key point is, is building things using this small def uh, default uh, backend engine. But let's say, OK, maybe for some weird reason, my C extension depends on the distutils way of building C extension. So what I can do is uh, no. uh, okay. so it's that. And here, I mean you can see it's like looks familiar, like that's a distutils output. And the thing here, I only change this one option in bento.info. And in the 
behind the scene, like the bento code doesn't change that much. It's only just this small part to build this extension that changes. Like you don't have to modify how install work. You don't have to modify how the installers works. All these kind of things that were a bit difficult to do in distutils itself. So another thing that I kind of like is uh, the notion of out of tree builds. So again, if you're familiar with configure, I mean autoconf, there's a way in, in with configure to like actually build your stuff outside the source tree. So you may ask, you know, why do you want to do that? And you want to do that because it's the only proper way to avoid polluting your source tree. Because for example, if you do like bento, like if you do an in-place build, then you will add some new files in your source tree. And then it's very difficult to make the difference between like source file and build files. But if you build your things outside your source tree, then you're sure that every time you build things, since your source tree is always the same, you're sure to always produce exactly the same thing, which is a very useful feature for uh, building things. So concretely, like if you do something like this, so this is an empty directory. So since it's out of tree, you need to tell Bento where to look for the Bento file. And now you see that everything is built here. The source tree hasn't been changed. Hasn't been changed, sorry. And you can just do things like, you know, And then you see that it's actually importing the bento which have been built here, and you can, and the, the pass, like the package actually works. So there are like more things uh, that I won't go into, but like you have way to like have like configure file tuning, like how to find third party library, like all options, like command line option for all commands are available to all commands. So which is something that was a bit hard to do in these two tiers. Like at configure time, you know the option for install, which allows you to do like a bit more advanced things, like when you, you need to do like relinking kind of things. You have also like simple mechanism to retrieve resources instead of like package resources, which I personally really hate. It's huge complex nonsense. And there are other things I intend to add uh, later. So like a bit like uh, as a conclusion, like. I talk a bit about NumPy and SciPy, and which is where I'm coming from. And to give a bit, hopefully, a better idea on of what Bento allows you to do. So I don't know if anybody here has ever tried to build uh, SciPy, but SciPy is like around 1,000 source files and a lot of Fortran, C, C++, etc. So it's pretty complex to build. And you know, since I'm a SciPy developer, I like to build SciPy, and I need to do that often. So, like, since the Bento script for SciPy use WAF in the backend, I can use parallel build. And here I'm saying, you know, for people who know Make, J8 means build with eight cores at the same time because I have eight cores on this machine, and then I can just build SciPy. And here, so it, all this is just WAF output, and you can see that you know it's building around this 1,000 files. And the idea is like normally building SciPy takes like three, four, five minutes, but since WAF supports like parallel build, normally I'm like you can see that right now you already build half of it. Like around 30 seconds is what it takes to build a SciPy completely, which is really useful again when you're a SciPy developer. And all these kind of things would be very hard to add to distutils because like there's no like real abstraction to how the build works. So okay, SciPy is built now. And all these kind of things are really useful for more complex packages. Okay, pass this. Okay, so to conclude a bit of my talk, um, so like I presented like Bento, why I think it's better than this duty, the kind of thing it allows you to do, and where it was coming from. So there's still a bit, a few things missing to be a complete replacement for these details. Like I don't have like MSI installer yet, and other few things like this. 
I also want to improve the parser for the Bento info file because there are some things which are a bit crappy and there are some weird color keys that don't work very well. And I'm so like starting to work on Bento Yar, uh, that is a Bento shop, which is something like a bit PyPy, -pi, but working like more explicitly and having like a list, explicit list of installed file with a local database of installed package so we can uh, like easy in install support and happy to get like features. And these are all the things you need to know if you are interested in following a bit more in details. The Bento code is on GitHub, like there is some documentation as well, and there is a mailing list here, uh, so you can ask questions and follow what's happening. And that's it. So thank you for your attention. Yeah, so like what happens is um, if it detects that virtual env is uh, activated, it will use uh, the virtual env option, like all the prefix, et cetera, all the paths will be automatically um, like set up the way virtual env expects them. So like it will install things in virtual env as so, okay, you would uh, expect. Let me rephrase that. Yeah. If they detect virtual env, then they will install everything inside the virtual env folder. Otherwise, I don't go with it. Is that what you mean? Yeah. So it's exactly the same way as this is, right? If you don't activate your virtual env, then if you do python setup.py.install, you just install in the system wide. So it doesn't provide that isolation we have to Well, it provides you exactly what virtual env provides because, you. Because like, you don't do something similar to what you have done, but they also isolate the, they also isolate the environment as well. In a way, they isolate the environment so that the package is less on folder because it's using the main That's what virtual env gives you, right? I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. This is a different approach. This is a different approach. Yeah, I, I guess the question is actually, does Bento provide some functionality of virtual env so you can you only rely on Bento without having virtual env? Oh, no, no. Oh, OK. Yeah, no. No, OK. So. But you will have package management uh, dependency uh, with dependency uh, your local uh, yep. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, this is not, that's something I want to work on, but oh, yeah. that's not implemented yet. And, yeah, I mean, that's typically one of the issues, you know, there's no perfect solutions. We have to find a trade-off, like, you know, you don't want to, yeah, I don't know exactly what the good solution is he here yet, but, uh, like, basically, I intend to have, like, a small database of all installed files, and every time you install a Bento package, it will be registered. But the problem is, you know, how to work, like, if you have packages in your Python pass which are not known to the database, you know, how do you interact with this? And so that's the kind of things that makes the problem a bit tricky. And I don't have a good answer yet. I haven't found the perfect solution. But this thing is, I decided to use uh, Bento to investigate my, my, my library. Mm -hmm. It means uh, it, can, it can't be installed using Pip or it's installed. Uh, like no, it can. No, it can. It doesn't generate, but the only thing you need to write is. Uh, so, oh okay, so I start with basic, I set up UI and generate the Bento pass. So, the way it works, like I say, you have a Bento package with a Bento.info. The only thing you need is to write this four line setup.py. And, oh. if, and if you have that, then pip will work. Well, like one of the problems is if you start from a setup.py, you don't want to overwrite the uh, in. Yeah. And like the problem also is like, you know, maybe some people don't use setup tools, they use just these tutorials. So you don't want to import setup tools here. Or like you may want to do more than, than just this, depending on your case, right? So. Uh, So can you repeat? Uh, get the packages, Python packages from Python, Python package index. Yeah. Do they do that? Or no, because like in today in Bento, there's no installer, right? Okay, okay. So like what you can do, you can register to PyPy. There's a register PyPy command and upload PyPy command but to you do. Cannot you cannot Bento doesn't download for it. Yeah, because the idea is you would use pip for that, right? Okay.
Well, so yeah, it's a bit difficult issue was uh, like when we started to be some work on like distribute and then distills too. So myself and other people try to like say, okay, if you want to improve distilleries, you know, we believe we have quite some experience with the issue with it and is what we think we should do. And at first the question was, oh no, we don't want to replace distillery, we just want to like improve it incrementally. And our point was, you know, you can't improve distillery incrementally because just we tried to do that and we failed, and I don't think it's really possible. And and then like the discussion started to be uh, about like installers and these kind of things, like metadata, which is not the most interesting things for us. And um, we, we, we couldn't really try. We couldn't really have a common ground of discussion. And uh, oh sure, yeah. So I mean, your your project is going to keep going. I guess. Yeah, and like another point. I mean, I don't know how significant it is, but like two months ago, there was a small workshop at PyData um, in, um, in San Ro Jose, uh, and like Guido was here, and like we mentioned like the problem, like where we don't we don't think this is to solve any issue for us, and his point was, you know, like I'm not really interested in packaging first, and his second answer was, you know, like if you really think that this is too doesn't solve the thing for you, then just do your own thing, yeah. and which is basically what we're doing here. So I wanted to support it, but then I realized first, I really don't like PKG resources, which the setup tools implementation of namespace rely on. And the other thing is there was a PEP on namespace package, but this was rejected for something else, and I haven't followed the latest. But not in the form that was originally. I mean, there were some changes I haven't followed. Okay. Stuff as if it was a package. And you can have multiple directories with the same name uh, with different modules in them that you can share. They can basically be the one package. Okay, so that's great because it means I have nothing to do. Yep. <laughs> so, yes, it does. <laughs> yeah, like I really do not want to rely on PKG resources. Yeah. So, for Python 2, well, yeah, move on. <laughs> Yeah, so Bento works on from Python 2.4 to Python 2.3.2, uh, and you don't need to run 2.2.3 on it. So it supports uh, all Python versions that I think matter. But no, I mean, there's no, I mean, yeah, there's no, there's no support for the namespace implementation of setup tools, mm -hmm. if that's your question. <laughs> this, there isn't, and I don't intend to do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs>